Love them or hate them, portable power stations have gained in popularity and usefulness just in recent years. And based off of that demand, we get more innovation and higher standards for making new batteries. So in today's video, let's talk about Ocatel. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Buy My Bits, and in today's video, I'm talking about the Ocatel P2001. Yes, it is another power station, but it comes packed with a few features that I love to see as just standardized features. But before I jump into that, yes, Ocatel did send this over for a review. However, that does not change my opinion on the battery. So let's jump into those specs. The Ocatel P2001 is capable of 2000 watts output with surge up to 4000 watts. It has a capacity of 2000 watt hours and uses lithium iron phosphate batteries as its core. Now these batteries have a recharge cycle rating of 3500 cycles before you see degradation. Internally, they're configured in a 48 volt system, well, 51-ish, but the big deal is how fast this thing can charge. Built in, it has its own supercharger capable of charging at 1100 watts just from the wall. You can also combine that with the DC charge to get an extra couple hundred watts, charging this thing from zero to 100 in one and a half hours. I should note that if you're just plugging it into the wall, you're looking at 1.8 to two hours recharge time. Also, side note, if you plug this into the wall, make sure that you're keeping into account other things that are plugged into that same circuit. That way you don't blow fuses and then wonder what happened. Because 1100 watts is no joke. Alcatel offers this battery with a two year warranty and it ranges in price varying from what promo code you use. So for example, you should see some discount codes in the description down below that should bring the price down to around $1,200. Overall for 2000 watt hour capacity battery, that's actually pretty reasonable, especially because nowadays it is very easy to find batteries getting up there in that 16, 17, $1,800 range really quickly. Okay, base specs out of the way, let's talk about some of the features that it has built in, some of which I think are really good to just see as a standard feature moving forward. First of all, on one side, you have your input port. So this is where you plug it into the wall, Right out of the gate here, you do not need a power brick. It just uses a standard computer cable, plug that right into the device and it has everything built in. This is a huge bonus for me. Second of all, you have the Anderson connector right next to it, which is what you would use to hook up solar panels. Flip it around, you have yourself six AC wall outlets that are capable of handling up to 20 amps per outlet. Not all at the same time, but as you can see, they got the little slit allowing you to plug in a 20 amp plug. Because this thing can handle so much power, it's just anticipating that you can run bigger items and thus need bigger plugs. On the front, this is where you have your DC and your USB layout. First and foremost, with the device powered on, all of these just take one click of the button and you can activate each one so that you don't have to like press and hold and guess what you're doing. But onto the DC, all of these I found are regulated at about 12.5 volts. Normally when I say a regulated DC out, I'm seeing usually thir over 13 volts for the DC port. With this one, I'm seeing no less than usually 12.5. However, that is a big difference from unregulated ports because with those, I can see it dip in the 11s. If you just happen to be running some kind of sensitive device, dipping into the 11s can be bad. It doesn't necessarily affect everybody, but the, rate, the port on this one is bringing in about 12.5. So you have the cigarette port, you have an XT60, and then you have two 5521 barrel connectors. Sliding over to the USB panel, you have two standard, just 2.4 amp USB ports. You have two higher wattage quick charge ports, and then you have two, yes, two 100 watt USB-C ports that can be used at the same time. So this device would be great taking it out camping or something, and you wanna charge multiple laptops, iPads, phones, Steam decks, whatever. On the far edge here, you do have a light, which I gotta be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of. My thing is I don't really like warm light and I've messed with some other batteries that have like bigger wraparound lights and I've put those to use on a camping site on the table, especially where the food is just to kind of light up the food, light up the area, make it easily accessible. So having that light I have found has been really nice. So something like this, it's just kind of seemed like, oh yeah, let's slap a light in there. Also make it really warm and just, I don't know. 
Nothing inherently wrong with the light, just as a personal preference, not the biggest fan. One thing that I can say though is I like the display. It has all the information that I expect to see from a solar battery or a portable power station, and it's super easy to read. So over on the one side, you have your watts both in and out, and you can see if it's in UPS mode or whatnot, it will tell you exactly what the wattage being used or being charged is. Whereas on the other side, it will give you a time remaining for either discharge or recharge. Then on the bottom of that, it will give you status icon for everything that you're using and these will start blinking when you overload them. And then dead set in the middle, you have your percentage of charge, which is nice, easy to read, and somewhat fancy. And then to give you an idea of what it looks like in UPS mode, you have this little icon down here that says it is plugged in. It's also charging the battery, but it's also running the device that I have plugged in currently, which is a space heater. But you can see the pass through current, and whenever you unplug it, it'll automatically switch over to backup power. And oddly, I think one of the best physical features about this, well, first of all, I gotta do, do the peel. Let's see if I can do the peel. Can I do the peel? <laughs> Break it, rip it off. Oddly, one of the best physical features I like about this is this little cubby case at the top. So these are the default cables because I just use my own cables when I shot all of my testing and everything. These are the default cables that come in the cubby that allows you to store, keep track, everything on the battery itself, which is actually really, really nice, especially if you lose things easily like me. So you have a pretty thick 20 amp capable computer amp cable that comes with it. Then you have an MC4 to Anderson connector. So this is what you're gonna to use to hook up your solar panels. And then you have a car charger to Anderson uh, connector. All of this of which you can throw right in the cubby and carry it with you. So no matter what you're doing, where you are, as long as you have some sort of power, you should be able to charge this thing on the go. I know it's a small feature, but legitimately when you like lose cables a lot, it's kind of nice to have that. I'm I really like it. Now onto the inverter. Like I said, this is a 2000 watt capable inverter. It can handle surge power up to 4,000 watts, untested, but that's what it says on the website. Honestly, I don't have anything that takes 4,000 watts, so hard for me to test that. Team of Soul test! In my testing, I was able to run this at 21 to 2200 watts for one to three minutes before it shut down into automatic overload protection, which is always good to see. I've always been an advocate for, hey, give me a little bit more than what I paid for. So that's what it did. It gave me a little bit more, but still shut down. It also has some minor features that you can change on here. For example, it runs at 60 or 50 Hertz. It is of course, pure sine wave, but you can also change the voltage from the 110 standard down to 100 volts, which really isn't gonna matter to you unless you are in Japan, because Japan is 100 volts. But switching between 50 and 60 is a nice feature. But my biggest deal with this pure sine wave inverter is going to be the built-in UPS feature. And this is one of those features that I cannot advocate enough for. I think it infinitely makes this battery a better investment than pretty much any other battery before that does not have the built-in UPS feature. I feel like I cannot reiterate this enough. A built-in UPS feature that actually bypasses the batteries and the charging and all of that and actually gives you a legitimate UPS feature makes this thing 10 times more useful. Okay, the 10 times is a little bit arbitrary, but hear me out. If you go camping or you need portable power just occasionally throughout the year and you make a big purchase like this, well, that's a lot of money just kind of sitting there and not giving you any benefit most of the year. However, if you buy something like this and it can also be a UPS backup source, I mean, we're talking things like computers, fridges, whatever. Having a built-in UPS feature allows you to use it year round if for whatever reason, you might have some power issues and you don't wanna actually have to drag this out of the closet every time the power goes down. So for example, yeah, it might be kind of an eyesore, but hey, maybe you have some power issues and you wanna hook this up to your like full-size fridge. You can do that. You can pass through up to 1,100 watts with this and not even touch the batteries in the inverter or anything like that. It has a 10 millisecond switch time, so yes, you could use it on most modern day PCs. I say that because just kind of depending on how like really old your power supply is, it might be a little bit more sensitive to that 10 millisecond uh, switch time. But with newer, higher quality power supplies, you shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. I'm just saying having that feature is definitely a big deal. It allows you to use your battery year round, so I definitely like seeing that as kind of a, a new standard moving forward. Like if I review another battery and it doesn't have that, it's gonna be like a thing. Focusing a little bit more in depth on the inverter, however, I do wanna talk about the efficiency curve that I was able to find with this battery. 
To kind of lay everything out, I am actually reviewing multiple batteries at the same time, all within the same power range, and I was just kind of getting a wild difference in results. Like most battery review people, I'm starting off with a kilowatt meter that allows me to read how much power is being consumed in order to run my test at different power draws. Usually the power draw is gonna be something like a heat gun or a space heater, which yes, are heavy resistant loads, but it's just the easiest way to maintain a power output without being super, super loud. However, because of the difference in results I got, I wanted to take the chance to verify some of my numbers. Let's just say that. Meet the kilowatt meter 5,000 that I custom built just for these battery reviews, just to confirm some of the numbers I was getting from here. Plot twist, the numbers are the same. So this was all for naught. This is a pretty good testing utility. However, this does handle up to 20 amps and I get multiple outlets. So this was still useful in terms of like, I can hook up a 20 amp cable. This is definitely a testing device. This is nothing that's actually day-to-day -day usage, but it is nice just having like on and off so I can start a test, get this reset, make sure everything's powered up, et cetera, kind of get everything going and then turn everything on. So it's kind of a waste of time, but also, that's kind of useful at the same time. Either way, this is what I use to either test or confirm some of the numbers that I pulled today, which I ran a total of five key testing points in order to see, get a general idea of what the power efficiency curve looks like. Now, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about when I say power efficiency curve, I am talking about how much the inverter is actually wasting power just being online, which can definitely be a key data point for these type of batteries. You have to find what battery is going to fit your usage the best. So for example, if you're taking this out literally just to run something that's really high power that you need for just a solid hour or two, and you wanna get the most out of it, you might have to find an inverter that has a higher efficiency curve at a higher output. Because even though it says two kilowatt hour capacity, if you have a lot of loss in the inverter, then it might not fit your specific needs. So to kind of lay this out, I did make a little makeshift graph with some paint style drawings in it. And my data points started all the way from 260 watt draw. Bear in mind, this is a pure sine wave pulling from the AC outlet that runs at 109 volts. I didn't mention that before, but it runs at 109 to 110 10 volts. At 260 watts, I was able to pull 1,640 watt hours, giving me a total efficiency rating at 82%. From there, it only went down at 560 watts. I got 1,590 watt hours for 80%, 1,150 and 1,230 watt draw gave me both 1,530 watt hours at 77% and a slamming 1,920 watts only gave me 1,460 watt hours. That is a 73% efficiency rating. One thing I do want to say is that I did have a couple outlining results that didn't align with anything like drastically on a lower level. Um, whenever I discharged this, supercharged it back up and then immediately turned around and discharged again in testing because everything was warmed up, everything was just kind of heated up, you know, those extra fans usage and everything just kind of keeping that cooling down did draw more power. So I was getting more accurate results whenever I basically gave it time in between testing and discharging. This is probably should be a standard for all batteries, but I just want to say like if you charge it real quick and then you have to go use it, you might get less efficiency just because it hasn't had a chance to cool down. So the max efficiency I was able to get out of this was 82% and the lowest was 73%. In my experience, topping out between 80 and 85% efficiency for these little portable power stations is pretty normal. I would have liked to see it closer to 75 or 80% when it gets closer to the 2000 watt draw, 73% was probably a little bit of a letdown, but overall not too terrible, which would only tell me that at the end of the day, if you're gonna get something like this, it would best be used over a longer period of time at that five to 600 watts, probably give or take some change, draw on it, where you can get the most battery life out of this battery. That still doesn't remove the fact that it can put out 2000 watts total of current, but if you wanna get the best bang out of your buck, as far as battery capacity goes, you probably wanna keep that, that draw just a little bit lower. Well guys, like I said before, there will be some links and discount codes in the description down below. So if you wanna see more information, specs, and or updated pricing, check out those links. As always guys, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, post them in the comments section down below. Thank you for watching, like, and subscribe, and have yourself a great day.